Okay. I uh, found it. As I uh, alluded to in a prior video, I found the information, the uh, wellspring from whence all the crap from multiple places on the internet originated. Um, it's kind of like if you whisper the truth to someone and they don't hear it very well, um, that it gets distorted and they uh, whisper it again to someone else and then it gets distorted more. It's kind of like amplifying noise. Oh my god, that makes so much sense. Yeah. Um, so the original source could be true, but everything after it <clears throat> kind of sounds like religion, doesn't it? Yeah. Um, everything after it turns to crap. Um, so I found the source of the bucket. And um, they're not wrong, it's just that, that they uh, commit a error of omission. Here, it's on Cambridge uh, in Colors uh, website, and they got a bucket over here, and uh, it's a thing about exposure. So, there are actually some errors on Cambridge in Color, but this isn't one of them, but it creates a huge error of omission, and I think people on YouTube uh, drew the wrong conclusions due to the error of omission. I mean, I know that they did due to this uh, thing right here in Cambridge and Color. I'll go briefly over what it says. It says it's about achieving correct exposures a lot like collecting rain in a bucket. While the rainfall uh, is uncontrollable, these factors remain under your control. The bucket's width, the duration you leave it in the rain, and the quality of the rain you want to collect. Now, they're talking about photosites, okay? Millions of them on a sensor. They're not talking about the sensor being bigger or smaller. Okay, and so these incorrect uh, conclusions on YouTube and all over the net, uh, they've uh, sprung from this. See, the original source is true, but they do not clarify, <coughs> failure, they don't clarify that they're talking about photosites. Exposure over time, they're, and they don't clarify if it's a photosites or if it's a sensor size. But of course it's about photosites. Bigger sensors don't collect more light. They have a larger angle of interception, but, you know, if you have a larger sensor, you know, the light from the larger sensor in the periphery has nothing to do with the exposure at the dead center of the sensor. So, you know, if I take a sensor this size, the light right here doesn't change. If I make it a larger sensor, as long as the gain and everything else remains constant, obviously the light in the center does not improve or get better or has better exposure if I make the sensor larger with the same pixel pitch. I mean, everything remains the same. If I make the sensor larger, nothing changes uh, in the center there. It just becomes a larger angle of interception, crop or no crop, right? Um, you just need to ensure that you collect too little water. For example, the same quantity of water, you can get away with less time in the rain you pick. Alternately, the same duration left in rain, a, a really narrow bucket. We're talking about photosites, not sensors. Photosites, not sensors. Really narrow bucket can be used as long as you plan on getting by with less water. In photography, exposure settings, aperture, shutter speed, and ISO. It's actually ISO, not ISO. Okay? I don't give a damn what anybody says. It's ISO. Not ISO. ISO. It's ISO. Tomato, tomato, potato, potato, but it's actually ISO, not ISO. Um, analogous to the width, time, and quantity discussed above. Further, just as the rainfall uh, was uh, beyond your control above, so too is natural light. Anyway, so there's the bucket now. There's the source for everybody's misunderstanding. It created an error of omission. So this website isn't wrong, but they did make a mistake by leaving important information out because dummies... Uh, thought that this was referring to uh, the people all over the internet, okay? This is all over the internet, everywhere. And you can find just type in sensor and bucket. And it's just people talking about it all over the damn place. So this is where the stupidity originated. And uh, that's, as they say, is that. Um, so now, going on, yeah, the bus. So I found the bucket source. You know, the bigger sensors have bigger buckets, larger photosites. But that's actually changed. Uh, well, new now, the new technology, like the new Canon 5D uh, with the pixel pitch of 4.14 micrometers. See, the, uh, the stuff after the sensor has gotten so good that now we can get by with uh, smaller uh, DX uh, pixel pitches of uh, four, 4 micrometers, basically, 4.14 in the Canon 5D. So it's all the crap after the sensor, all this really, and I'm taking a lot apart a lot of digital cameras. Like I said, when Canon, backwards engineers, cameras, they don't give a crap about the sensor, and vice versa with Nikon. They care about all the crap after the sensor. All of that stuff is what they care about. 80 converters, SNR firmware, buffers, processors, bridges, 
they care a lot about the bridges too. There's a lot of stuff in there that nobody, and it doesn't help you make a better photograph, of course. You know, duh. If someone told you that unicorns are what's capturing light behind the shutter, I mean, is that going to change the way you take a photograph? Or the uh, the quality of the photographs? No. This is just one aspect of photography. Obviously, the scientific stuff. As uh, let me quote, uh, let me quote uh, Zach Arias. He made a funny thing on an article called Cropper Crap, and uh, he's talking about math and photography. You know, like uh, button sniffing, pixel pitches. You know, sniffing cameras. He says, "Oh, yummy, yummy math." Uh, he's this is me quoting Zach Arias. He goes, "Yummy, yummy math." This is why I got into photography because I love math. You know. His ultimate point is, is that he cares about making beautiful photographs and, as he calls it, uh, capturing the moment. And, of course, that's always been the truth. That's been, you know, the premise that I put forward. Just because I make some videos about the science of photography doesn't mean I don't care about the art of photography because that's all ultimately I do care about. Um, so now we're actually getting uh, bigger sensors with tiny little buckets. So things have been swapped up. We Bigger sensors have better gain, but it wasn't because they were bigger sensors. It's because the bigger sensors have uh, bigger photo size, bigger pixel pitches. Smaller DX sensors uh, had uh, worse ISO performance and worse dynamic range because, not because they were smaller sensors, but because they had smaller little photo sites, millions of points of light. But now things have been switched up because uh, the all the stuff after the processor, the sensor has gotten so good, we can get by with a full frame sensor with tiny little DX pixel pitches, as I stated many, many times before. Ultimately, the only thing that matters is output. So obviously, and I've said that a thousand times, of course. Um, but all these people talking about sensors, I just made a video about sensors. That was just the video I just made about sensors was to attack all the the Sony uh, fanboy uh, morons. Like you got a Sony sensor in that Nikon. He's like, yeah, okay. Well, Nikon's uh, top cameras uh, don't have Sony sensors in them. They're flagship cameras: the D4S, D3, D5. Um, so the notion that you know you should care about the the sensor of the camera. Is ultimately not important. The only thing that's important is the output. Um, what matters is like looking at a car. You, I mean, you can see people like they'll take an old rusted car and they'll leave it rusted, but they'll put in like this super high performance engine in it. This is a perfect analogy right here. The can the Nikon D3 versus the D3s and D3x. The same thing that Nikon did with the D4 versus the D4s. Nikon does this all the time. Kind of like the final product. The final product. Every time I make a video, the phone rings. Uh, the final product of uh, the Nikon D600 and D610 was the D750. It's kind of, and this is really irrefutable, the D600 and the D610 are basically like the prototypes that culminated in the D750. D750 is the exact same sensor as the Nikon D10. Exactly the same. But it performs far, 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 far better in low light. But that had nothing to do with the sensor has to do with all the crap after the sensor. Like if I were to, to only to change a few things on this camera, leave the sensor and everything the same, I can make it a lot, lot, lot better in high ISO performance if I had the magic abilities to upgrade the SNR firmware in this old camera, 80 converters, buffers, blah, blah, blah. It'd have a lot better output. Nothing has changed. The lens stayed the same. The sensor stayed the same. The important stuff that people nobody talks about, that changed. That is why the output got a lot, lot better and turned out to be a lot better product, a lot better output. So, I could actually take the D3 and make it a uh, much uh, more perfect uh, camera just by improving the firmware, which is what they did in the D3S, D3X, and they did in the D4S versus the Nikon D4, and the same thing they did in the Nikon D... You know what the Nikon D750 is? Listen closely. Listen closely. The Nikon D750 is really a Nikon D610S. Obviously, they changed the, uh, the body style and all that other stuff, but really, that's what the Nikon D750 is. So it's got a flip screen, too, but ultimately, uh, the sensor is the same. It changed the autofocus system, too. So, yeah, it's kind of radically different, but really, since the same sensor, is, you just call it the Nikon D610S, but, of course, they didn't want to do that. They changed a lot of things, but it's still, ultimately, that was the culmination, the D600, D610, and they came out with D750. Um, that really is an irreducible case. They figured out a lot of their screw-ups in the D600, made the D610. It's like, well, we still got screw-ups, especially with autofocus, and with the Nikon D750. So the same thing holds true with the car analogy. Someone looks like a rusted old car. It's like, well, that's a piece of crap. You know, that rusted old piece of crap. It's like, well, you, what you don't know 
is that while the body of that car is a rusted old piece of crap, uh, the uh, the engine and all the stuff under the hood is like brand spanking new and just blazing fast. You can actually see cars like that. It's like, ah, that old jalopy isn't going to do anything, and someone peels rubber and goes down the road with it. They even keep the rust on the outside to make it look like an old crappy car. Um, so ultimately what matters is not the sensor, it's all the crap after the sensor. Um, but I was just pointing out stuff against the fanboys, like, it's a Sony sensor in that Nikon. Well, there's not a Sony sensor in this Nikon. It's not. Nor in the D4, nor in the D4S, nor in the Nikon D5. But that is the ultimate source of the error. The source is not incorrect, it is how people understood what it was saying is incorrect. See, people read this and... They thought it said one thing, but it didn't say that. So, anyway, that's the answer to that. Be a truth seeker, baby. It's okay to be wrong as long as you love uh, truth. Because a truth seeker likes being proven right, and he likes being proven wrong. Why is that? Because if you're a truth seeker and you're proven right, that means you're on the right path. And if you're a truth seeker and you're uh, proven wrong, that means someone has directed you onto the right path. In any case, you're headed in the right direction. You get how that works? He's like, you're wrong. Why? Well, screw you. Why am I wrong? Well, because you're wrong. If you're a truth seeker, like, oh my God, thank you. You know, I like being corrected and put on the right path. I was headed in the wrong direction. So if you're a truth seeker, you are headed in the same direction. You want to enjoy being proven wrong. Seeking truth and wisdom is important. You should enjoy being proven wrong. Everybody should be. I mean, I made big, big mistakes back in the day. And, uh, you know, even some of my photography uh, uh, teachers in uh, photography school were telling me crap and I was repeating it in the camera store. And like I said, someone came along like, you're wrong, man. Boom! And I was like, damn, I was wrong that whole time. So, it's uh, good to be corrected. A lot of people don't like to be corrected. When you correct someone, they go, you're a troll. You're a troll. No, just listen up. You're wrong. No, 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 you're a troll. Nah. That's how everybody is now. People think I'm a whiner. And I'm nothing of a whiner compared to most people out there. But uh, obviously I've got my faults. I know what 99% of them are, but we all have faults. But anyway, get you later. Bye.